Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tunnel Heroes, episode number 95. I'm your host, Solid Jake. Kubi is out this week, but we've got Zoya, K1 Pro, Schwimpy, and Arthlon is looking as angry as ever. Arthlon, <laughs> why are you so upset? He's so happy. I'm not upset. I get him. But you look so upset. Oh, I'm fine. Don't worry about me. <laughs> well, what's new, my friend? Uh, Not much. Got back from China and... Was kind of sick from that, so just been chilling, waiting to feel better, and enjoying the new heroes stuff. Uh, we played in the qualifier for Spring Championship last weekend, and we we're qualified for LA, so that's good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, other than that, I played some Blade and Soul and some a lot of H1 recently, so that's basically it. Nice Zoloff. What's up? What's new with you, my friend? How you doing? Uh, you know, I got to catch the first qualifier with Gilly. A lot of really fun games. We followed Cloud9 most of the bracket. Um, well, they definitely uh, showed us some fun stuff. We saw uh, Tychus pick somehow, which blew my mind. And Tychus is good, dude. I'm, bring, I'm gonna bring him back. Do it, please. Do it, dude. I believe in you. Uh, but no, it was a really fun. It was a really fun cast. Um, be casting the next qualifier again. Uh, with Gillyweed, which I'm really excited for, because hopefully that's the one my team qualifies for. <laughs> hopefully, we'll see. Good luck, man. Um, but um, yeah, it's I don't know. There's there's so much hero stuff going on right now. Uh, you know, a lot of patches, updates. I mean, quick match got or uh, hero league memoir grouping system thing got changed today. Like yep. the game's constantly changing and getting updates. So I know heroes is just awesome right now. I'm really happy. Shrimpy, welcome back, my friend. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. You know, swap team, swap role. So I'm having a good time again. But Trying to learn Assassin. Not going so well, but... I, I believe in you. You can do it. Thanks. But much. heavy emphasis on trying, because, yeah. You got a lot of changing to do. Why are you uh, role swapping? I'm sure we'll talk about that later, actually. Yeah, we can talk about that later. We'll get that full update. K1. Welcome to the show for the first time. Yep. Thanks. Uh, I've pretty much been doing the same exact thing as ours. Just got back from China, really sick and jet lagged for like 10 days, still a little sick. And we qualified for LA, and I've just been grinding Blade and Soul for like <laughs> the last week every day. So is the mentality like, <laughs> all right, we qualified, we don't have to play till the end of the month, let's take a break? Uh, I just I just get addicted to MMOs. I should probably <laughs> I need to play Heroes some more soon. Same. I mean, you got a month, right? Like you're good. Yeah. That's <laughs> in a month, isn't it? Isn't the? It's, it's the end of the month. Yeah. It's the last finals week in 27, 28, yeah. right? Last week. Okay. Last week in February. Sorry, I just got assaulted by the leaming sound effects when I launched the client. Um, okay, very good. Well, welcome to the show, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about the state of the assassins. We actually have three top-tier assassin players on the show. We're going to be talking a lot about the various assassins that have seen big changes, primarily talking about heroes like Li Ming, Lunara, Greymane, the newer heroes that have seen some big changes, and of course, some of the other heroes that have become more prominent over the last couple of uh, weeks. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess weeks is safe to say. And let's actually just start out with that topic. So first things first, Li Ming, everybody's talking about her. She's the new hero. I've heard uh, most players say that she is absolutely ridiculously good but a few players have said they're not so sure exactly how viable she's oh no she's be. busted for sure there's no doubt about it yeah she's really strong uh, she, needs, she needs nerfs she needs nerfs day one she needs she's, nerfs. she's gonna well, be she, first pick she's, first yeah, band like, she's gonna need nerfs yeah she's gonna be basically unplayable until she gets nerfs because she's just gonna be permanent mm -hmm. yeah does EU agree with this, Shrimpy? I don't know. Maybe EU people in Hero League suck, but haven't done so well, in my opinion. Like, I haven't seen much good from it. So, before. how have you been playing her? And then we'll ask how these guys have been playing her. Like, what kind of talents are you going for on Li Ming? No 
fucking clue. They can start. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna check the talents. Good. Good. Well, we'll start with Cloud9. How are you guys playing? Um, there's basically two builds. One is you focus on teleport, and then the other one's uh, kind of focus on kind of like a long range, uh, what do you call it, like one shot type build. The W build? You like the, or the... It's not the W build. You get like the pull in at four, you get like the That's extra the damage at seven with your Q, Seeker. and then yep. you get like the five missiles at 16, oh. you get glass cannon. It's ridiculous. Glass like... cannon. It's literally uh, a one shot build. Yeah. Like we used yeah. to call yeah. no one shot. No, 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 no. This is actually one shot. So I've actually been running this exact build with S of Johan, Seeker, uh, Disintegrate, but oftentimes when there's melee assassins that really give her trouble, you can still go for Illusionist and Diamond Skin or even just one of the two and still basically one shot people. So you don't even need all of those abilities. It's just when you have Mirror Ball and you use that on something like an Immortal or you use it on a tower, it just, it's like half the, the tower's health. Yeah, it's ridiculous from ridiculous. one Q. It's outrageous. Her tower abilities two. need to do like half damage versus minions and tap forts it's or something. Insane. Like, well, the siege is ridiculous. With that being said, I'm glad we finally get a hero that's not bad and on release. Uh, yeah. Like, well, yeah. I'd but much rather have a hero that's broken. Well, not OP necessarily a Taylor, because the one. last the last three assassins released didn't see play because they're bad. This assassin's not going to see play because she's going to be banned every game. So At least it either way, we still don't have new assassins being played. I mean, I guess that's true. Technically. No, but yeah, it's a nice change of pace uh, with her being. She's she's fun. Um, I love that. Like on Blackheart's Bay, if you just disintegrate a chest, it's like dead instantly. It's like <laughs> instant coins. Like I, every time I see it, it just cracks me up. Like just the coins, just the, like the chest just evaporates. It's so funny, yeah. man. Things like I'm that. I'm sure they'll is, fix uh, that. I mean, that's how all abilities work, I mean, right? No. Like. Tychus like was always really great at clearing those things with his auto attack speed just insanely fast. I don't think I don't think disintegrating a chest is on the top priority for so fixes. What makes her so strong? <laughs> What's making her so broken? Just her her burst with her abilities like is It's like low cooldown on her Q and her E. Really high damage, pretty low mana cost. And it's just basically everything about her is good. Trippy, what... like you can't you can't name one bad thing about her. Okay, Trippy, what style have you been trying? I guess I'm playing a bit more safe. I'm not I'm not going the glass cannon at least. You... I haven't tried that yet. So you're you're going for illusionist? The teleport? I actually played the cannon air as well. I don't know. Illusionist doesn't feel so good in my opinion. Like you never get burst at fifteen percent. It feels like. Yeah. <coughs> uh. Depends. The thing, yeah, the, the, I haven't really noticed the cooldown reset on that talent. It's more for the range. There's a, there's a lot of people running Shadow Assault Zeratul right now, and if you pick Illusionist for Shadow Assault Zeratul, you can just blink every time he attacks you, pretty much. It's really fun. But yeah, that's a pretty specific situation. There's, it's definitely very good against those kind of heroes that are going after you. Thrall with Wind Fury, he's going to chunk you, and you just you just blink. She has a very low health pool. How does she compare to, like, Katarina from League, who also has, you know, an ability reset? It's not very similar. Katarina could, like, completely obliterate a team fight if she got one kill, whereas with Lee Ming, it kind of doesn't really matter if you get the kill or not, honestly. She just always does a lot of damage with her Q and W. So it's not, I don't think it's that similar. Hmm. I mean, we'll see, but I've definitely seen some situations where the reset's insane. Like with disintegrate at twenty, if you go for the slow on it, you just they they can't fight. Sixty percent slow on a reset that you just keep that on in a big AOE, it's ridiculous. Maybe yeah, maybe yeah. in Hero League. I don't I haven't really seen anything close to it in Oh you've been doing scrims. scrims. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. I don't know, the, re the reset is pretty damn broken. Like if you reset three times it's stupidly OP. Yeah, they should probably make a cap or something. Yeah, or like a two reset cap like a within or something, a time frame know. or something. Yeah, I think. Yeah, but she is gated like by mana for it. And if cooldowns are like twice, so low. Like if you reset twice, it sounds like you already won the fight. Yeah, it's yeah. true. It's that. Her cooldowns are so low that like the reset really doesn't matter. But if you go ask for presence, you can maintain like a huge presence in the fights with the resets. Yeah. 
Uh, Power Hunger obviously gives you a lot more damage potential, but if you're resetting, Astral Presence lets you snowball really hard. What are you guys going at 20? Um, I think Archon's fun, but not actually good. Yeah. Um, I think you're, if you go to Disintegrate, either the slow or Talarash's is going to be the go-to. I really like the slow. I think it's really good. I don't think, what is it called? Force... Force, wave of force, like whale or something. Wave of force, force, wave of force is what it's called. Wave of force, yeah. I don't think that talent or heroic's very good. Not till twenty. So I don't At think twenty, it's ridiculous. <laughs> so yeah, twenty, it's, it's ridiculous. It's <laughs> but I'm thinking until then, it's pretty bad. I think the talent is fine. I I used it a lot, and the knock around is so good. You can do so much with it, in my opinion. It, it's at least got a place like situationally. Like if you do need that extra interrupt, it's a lot of. It's a lot of control, and when you talk about that on resets, like it give if you're good with it, the potential is very high. It's well, just, I think at twenty, it's like oh, twenty is way better. But just but, yeah, the well, resets alone, though, are really good for it. Been pressed by it. So if we had a rate leaming compared to just compare it to Kalefoss, no other assassins compare leaming to Kalefoss K one. Where does she stand? To current Kalefoss, yes. Um, I think she's above him. Maybe, uh, uh, she has a good amount above him. She doesn't have a, a stun. She doesn't have gravity lap. She's still above Kalfas, in your opinion? Yeah, I think she just puts out way more damage, and she's not super weak early. Shrimpy. No clue, to be honest. I haven't been able to scream yeah. with her. Yeah, she hasn't been out very long in Europe. That's true. So... Well, she's also banned for the next two weeks from most teams. True. Like, if you have not qualified for Road to BlizzCon, you're probably not going to be playing her in Yeah, scrims. that's good points. Yeah, we only scream people today that are playing the next qualifier, so didn't get yeah. to try her out. Our... She's pretty strong. Yeah, Yeah, she's way better than Kel'Thas right now. Arguably, maybe as good as Kel'Thas when he had Ignite. But maybe not. Yeah, really that's really a good. bold claim. Yeah, it's a bold a, claim. A lot of bad be. teams got wins because of that build. <laughs> I don't know. That's pretty... Yeah, she's good. Uh, I've seen a few uh, scrim replays of her, and, I mean, the raw number she does is just ridiculous. Like, she can turn a losing fight by herself, like, 100%. Yeah. It's like Jeez. high range, low cooldowns, high damage, I... like, good mobility. I look at someone like UK1 that's known for flanking, and she's so safe to flank with because teleport. Like, you yeah. can get away with the craziest poke with her. So, I don't know. Yeah, I still need to try it, but <laughs> looking forward to that. Oh. Yeah, it's it's interesting learning all the places that you can use the blink to go over walls because it is a very short radius. Uh, you know, yeah, but if you go illusionist, it like doubles the amount of situations on especially like a lot of maps you can get over like a tomb of the spider queen just about any wall you can blink over with illusionist so you can blink over some walls without illusionist so it's it's pretty cool definitely a cool option to have but all right next on the table let's talk about gray main gray main's starting to see a lot more play um, in general, he's received a lot of buffs. The disengage change, the Gilman cocktail got upgraded. He got a little bit more um, damage on a few, of, a few of his abilities across the board. And just in general, I think Grayman, he's definitely feeling a lot better than at launch. Shrimpy, do you think Grayman is a hero that is a, a viable assassin in a lot of situations? At this point? Uh, I mean, we played her six games in a row in the qualifier exactly. last Saturday, so... Yeah, like I think it's really strong if you know how to use it. Uh, like if you know when to jump in, when you can't, when you poke, like I think he's top tier actually. Top tier? Yeah, what? I do. Uh, I do know. you think he has style, like flexibility? Do you have to play Gilnay and Cocktail Bill? Like what What do you think the, the optimal way to play Greyman is? The optimal way is probably Cocktail. Like yeah. that's what I see most from. And seems to do like all right you don't need other talents to do anything special so i think we say top is the tier. Best. you you put them like on the same tier as like jaina and ballstad yeah Damn, man. something like that he's got the burst mm. potential mm, i don't think he's at the same tier as jaina ballstad I, I think he's better than like the vala rainer tier but i don't think he's the same as vala or ballstad 
Jaina. I think he like falls in between from the games I've seen. I don't know if he's. And what? What? Why do you think he falls below them? What do you think he lacks that they have? I mean, Jaina like or Fall says got like a game changing heroic like. <laughs> Gonna win a fight with us, hundred percent. And then Jane has just got you know great survivability, great debt burst and stuff. I just see him more as like a. I see Greymain as more of like a we're last pick. Like this is our last pick. We need a damage. You know how you sometimes see like Sylvanas, Vala. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah exactly. Pick. That's where I see Greymain. Like you can like fit a Greymain in as that last pick. Mm-hmm. But maybe maybe I'm just we're like NA still like NA's always that's, that's, slow on these heroes sometimes. Yeah. So. I think Raymane's more of um, you have guaranteed a lot of guaranteed kills with like good coordination just because his burst is unrivaled, really. With go for the throat, he can just snowball someone down so fast. So it's a very different style hero at the end of the day. K1, yeah, where do you think too much of him in an A, but hmm? what do you think in K1 about Raymane? I don't know. I haven't played him either. <laughs> You're such a <laughs> slacker. He... He doesn't look that strong. I feel like he has such a weak early game. He's getting played I mean, I've played compared to the other range assassins. Strong. Like I played with and against it in scrims, but he hasn't impressed me at all. I think he has a place. It's just he's not he's not OP or anything. He's just yeah, he's okay. He's okay. I think, I think he's better than okay. I think he's a little bit better than okay. But I we're think, definitely going to see Greymane a lot more often. Like in six tournaments. six out of ten. Six out of ten. That's it. That's so. That's better than okay. <laughs> that's better than mediocre. <laughs> All right. Well, that's actually something that's really interesting because we're seeing him used a lot in Korea. We're seeing him used a lot in Europe. And NA, so far, are not sold on him yet. So I'm actually really excited to see the stylistic preferences. Next up, Lunara came out before these two heroes. She finally got her auto attacks fixed. Her auto attacks are smooth. <laughs> they buffed her damage. They buffed her health. You're shaking your head, Arthlon. She's still bad. Why? Well, they didn't really fix any of her flaws with the buffs they gave her. So they still exist. Like, Wisp is still a bad ability. You still have to talent into it at four. Q is basically still bad. There's no good talents for that. Her poison is like, it's okay damage, but it's not burst. It's all sustained damage. And in Heroes, it doesn't really matter because everyone has really good health regen and healing. And then her auto attacks still don't do very much damage. If they gave her a half version of Galloping Gate at level 20, if they gave her like a 40% or 30% movement speed buff or something baseline, would you that mean be like enough? As an active, active as ability. activatable baseline that she gets to level 1 and then Galloping Gate's just a massive upgrade for it, would that be enough to make her, because that would give her mobility, it would give her aggressive and defensive options. Would that be enough? I don't think so. Probably. It would help. Okay, well, if you just give her that for free, it's well, still not it's fixing like version, her right? main flaws. I don't think she's th that bad. Now. I don't think she's unviable right now. Yeah, I think she. I, I think, think she falls in the same place for her, her, but I think yeah. she's mm, she's pretty weak. But I think she has a spot. I, she might be I, think, a good pick. I think she's like a very like situational pick, but I don't think she's completely useless. I think she'll see yeah, some play. Yeah, very situational. I just don't Trumpy. see why I would, I would ever pick Lunara over something like Vala. Yeah. What or kind Rain. of builds do you think are good for Lunara? The Q build, or you have to go the Wild Vigor auto attack, Starward Spear? Um, yeah, you basically have to go 7, 16 talents for W. And then I think at 13, you either go like Spell Shield. Well, there's always a good option at 13. And then all the other towns don't really matter, so that's basically the build. Shrippy, what do you but, think about Lunara? Yeah. I think she's fine. Like she's not like overpowered. She's not pre like one of your preferred picks, but she definitely has a place, I think. Yeah. Like if you wanna get down the front line, I think she's fine. If that's like your goal in the game, then she's viable. But... Is she is she too easily countered by a hero like Medic? I don't think she's good against well, well, I don't. Yeah. I think you just don't pick her if they're gonna get go medic. Just, you just don't let that situation. But she's yeah. okay against medic because yeah. it's a lot of spread damage. But yeah, I think that's like the best situation for Lonara yeah. is against single target healing. I think 
she's worse. I don't know. A lot of the a lot of the times, the poison ends up kind of like being left there, and the target's about to die, and medic can just keep that target barely alive. It's not often that Lunara can stay in and keep that poison. That's why it's a situational pick, like you know, you yeah, go for like a poke comp or something. You know, she'll like hmm. fit into that or something. But, I think she's just a worse follow. That's basically it. I think the changes that were done to her were good though. Like they yeah. were like Other. they they helped her a lot. Like she was at, like she was literally cancer to play with in Hero League. Like if you got a Lunara, it was like wow, yeah, it's gonna true. be a tough game. And now it's much better. Like like I think she's a solid hero. Um, you know that you know has it like has a place. And if she's it does fun. end up in Hero League, and she is fun, yeah. She if you do end fun. up with her on Hero League on your team, you know it's not like oh my god, free win for the other team, right? You know. I think uh, this change is worth a step in the right direction. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually thinking she's a lot of fun. All right, next up, Chugal. A lot of people have said that, you know, Chugal's like on that, that cusp of being competitive and they Chugal just got a big buff. Gaul got a lot more damage, a little bit more flexibility with talents. Cho got a nice buff as well. Are we going to start seeing Chugal played in tournaments? Yes. I think it's still up in the air. I think there's a good chance that, yes, he will be played. I mean, we, we we saw Korea run him before the patch. I mean, it wasn't the best game. he was played in game. NA this weekend, too. I think you I guys mean, played him, right? A lot of heroes were played this weekend. We can't really justify <laughs> it. Let's not talk about last weekend. That's... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't talk about anything. Like, you can't be like, oh, Tigus has a 100% win rate, guys. Like, uh, that's true. Um, I, I think, you know, before he was on the verge of being pickable right like i don't think there's ever a situation unless he gets buffed insanely more he'll ever be like you know every single game contested but there is a place for chogol now someone's gonna go i think in competitive it's like he has to be really really good to make up for the fact that he counts as two heroes i think it doesn't matter as much in hero league but for competitive like he actually really has to be really really good to make up for that well, I think he's almost there. You think it's like his viability goes up a lot on smaller maps. You can think of like a two lane map or Tomb of the Spider Queen. Is his viability much higher? Yeah, I think so. I don't think it's map by map. I think it's just the fact that, you know, it's one body instead of two. Yeah. One health pool instead of two. Sure. I don't know. I hate Shogun. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> it's so. Why would you ever want to pick it? I don't see anything. He doesn't really have CC. He counts as two heroes. <laughs> I mean, CC. I don't see anything good. I like playing Cho, but shoot me if I ever play Gaul. I fall asleep, man. It's like, I, it was really fun at the start, but I space out. On Gaul. Oh my god, Gaul is so out. boring to play. Playing Gaul is the worst, because it's just like, I remember playing Cho Gaul with Jake, and it's like, Jake, I don't want you to go this way. But he's in control, <laughs> so he's going that way. <laughs> I'm going to spam my spells, and... <laughs> You know, that, that it's it's very difficult not like play you, with you have to pay me to play Gaul every game like five dollars at least I hate playing Damn, Gaul. you're cheap that's not cheap that's so I can reckon money that's like 20 bucks a night at least <laughs> esports. esports um any other assassins you think that like we might see shifting things up here in in the meta that you guys Tychus. have your eyes on all right explain yourself I'm just kidding well, maybe, maybe. What do we'll you guys see. think Rainer falls right now after the nerfs? Because before he was pretty heavily contested, um, but now with the nerfs to his health uh, or his healing, um, his health, and then the nerf to the double Q build, um, where do you guys think he focus falls? Attack, but yeah, focus know. attack too. Uh, I think Rainer's still really good. You just yeah, the game. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's fine. Like it's not bad. It's not super good. Situational again, I think. Sonia kind of fits in as an assassin. Is she in the dumpster? Sonia is still just as good, I think. Even with all the damage nerfs? I mean, mm, W damage. Yeah, nerfs. she's a little weaker. She's a little weaker early, I think, but I think she's still strong. Cool. Yeah, you, didn't, you didn't pick Sonia for early game, though. You always pick her for 16 and beyond. I think Syl is underpicked right now. I think she's still a strong pick on in certain situations. Yeah. Seems like a lot of people stop playing Sylvanas. That's a very, like, NA mentality, though. Like, no other region values split pushing right now, like, at all. Oh, I think Europe does a bit. I, w I wouldn't even say I'd pick her for split pushing. I'd pick her for other reasons. 
just well, like the silence or the mobility she has. No. She's one no. of the best wave clears. I mean, just siege yeah. damage here. She's really strong early game. Okay. Cold Embrace yeah, is think, also OP. I think Sylvanas is good. Good now, especially with the tower buffs as well. Like 50% yeah, more damage. Yeah, true. Yeah, that's I mean, true. She, After she that got change. even stronger. Her trait point. means a lot more now. Yeah. People can't just send her a turret and be like, la di da 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 But Sylvanas can. Oh, a turret's hitting me. That's funny. <laughs> no wonder I'm at 98% health. Dude, I've seen so many people die to turrets like since this patch. Changed. Oh, yeah. Turrets chunk now. It's hilarious. It's, it's good. I like it. But K1, hmm? what are you hiding from us? <laughs> um, He's got a secret I'll be honest. All, like all my it. opinions of how to play hot. <laughs> I don't know why you brought up Savannah's. Possession, it's it's real. Confirmed boys. Possession. Oh my possess. god. Possession. Great, Kate. They found us out. Hey, one for <laughs> Great wanna, job. I feel like I don't want to say everything I think, because then everyone will know. Oh man. King Caffeine agrees with me. At least he's got my back. Cold Embrace man is dumb. Like that is a that is a ridiculous talent. AoE Hunter's Mark. Level 16. That's with insane. a way bigger range than uh not numbing blast. Called them no. What's it called? Hunter northern Mark? exposure. Northern exposure. Oh, northern exposure. Yeah, much bigger range than northern exposure. So, all right. Um, someone in the chat brings up Zeratul. Another good point. He's seen some big changes. Void Prison untouched more or less, but they did a massive buff on Shadow Assault. Make a make a cooldown reduction from 100 seconds down to 45 seconds on Shadow Assault. Is that is it a thing? Are we going to see Shadow Assault Zero Swing up? I think the Q damage buff was bigger than the Shadow oh, yeah? Assault. Wow. Agreed. Q build is insane right now. <laughs> he does so much damage with the Q build. It's ridiculous. I agree with Taylor 100%. Well, Shadow Assault, it's like, it's usable now, I think, but it's not good. It's still not really a good heroic. You know, it's better now that it's at 45 seconds, but it's like. Before you'd use it, it's like, oh wow, this is a heroic ability. <laughs> like, this feels like it should be a basic one. Yeah, no, it, like, it was really. Nice I think before. maybe with divine shield, you could still pull some things off. But uh, well, in China, there was a set with um, someone in chat might know. I forget which teams it was was playing. I think it was YL actually. YL did Shadow Salt, Zeratul, Uther before the change. So if they're willing to run it, then I'm sure they'd be more than willing to run it now. Yeah. I think the only situation to see Shadow Assault that? is... Uther. This was in uh, the Gold League. In the group stages. Win? No. Uh, well, <laughs> no. But they were willing to run it. That's win. all I said was yeah. they were willing to run it. Well, I was not impressed, but they were willing to run it then. <laughs> Great. Um, all right. Seems good for Hero League. Yeah, it's basically like you can go Shadow Assault and Hero League now. <laughs> no. It could be good versus Globals. Oh, that, well, it blows my mind, man. They nerf Nova because she's toxic in Hero League, and then they buff Shadow Assault. Yeah. How many new players are just going to get bodied by Shadow Nova. Assault? Be like, Zeratul's the dumbest hero. Ugh. Well, to talk about Nova, she's obviously infinitely worse, but at least she has talent diversity, and they could definitely tweak her numbers. <laughs> they did the same thing to Nova they did to Lunar, and now you have to pick a talent for a Only shit a ability Only at level tier. 4. I think she'll have more build styles. If they tweak some numbers, I think she could be viable again. But I like and then they gave her, like, one of the worst talents ever. Which one? At level 7. The one where you have to hit snipe on heroes oh, every time you snipe master. <laughs> At least it's interesting. How, how did that go through? How did that, <laughs> how did that come up with somebody, and like, saying, I think this is a good talent? What do you think? Do you, how do you think, Brody Boy? Brody Boy's like, oh, yeah. Let's put that in the game. Boy? <laughs> you only can use snipe on heroes, and you can't miss. Brody Boy. Yeah. D-Bro. I don't know. They need Chat brings... Chat brings up a good point, Jake. We didn't talk about the biggest assassin change in the game. Those well, assassin buffs to a Rhaegar? I mean, well, holy cow. Well, yeah, we're getting there. And that's going to segue us into Illidan. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's talk about Illidan. Well, great. Four. Rhaegar first. Illidan first. Four. <laughs> four. <laughs> More than three. Four. Less than five, but four. So as much as you joke about Illidan's buff, indirectly, he might be more viable with the changes they made to heroes like Rhaegar, right? Illidan and Rhaegar have always been a match made in heaven, but the new Rhaegar is ridiculous. And the cleanse yeah, change could be good for right Illidan now. as well. Yeah, no, Rhaegar is ridiculous right now. Um, yeah, like I don't know if it's a secret or not, but just in case 
it it is. <laughs> I mean, he's 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 good. Rager's Rager's day one win rate on hot slogs was sixty three percent. It's insane. He's ridiculous. He's better he's a, in every way. <laughs> he secures. There's so many like little like giazzles I get tweeted at to me that just like. Look at this Rhaegar secure a kill with Feral Lunge. Like, what? He, he secures kills. He's got better lane clear in just about any support. He's better at marking. Just He's faster than Karazim and just as efficient as, as, as Karazim. So he's better than Karazim at marking. Um, and there's actually a chance we'll see Bloodlust with this new like, Rhaegar as well. So... No, you're wrong on that. <laughs> Don't <laughs> crush my dreams. That's that has nothing to do with Rhaegar. Oh, Being my good. God. Sorry to get your hopes up. Dude, but Arthlon is just ruthless today, man. No dreams for Jake. No dreams. Just sit down. You know, get your... I don't want people watching be like, wow, Rager is good because of bloodlust. No, that's not no. why. I said it's there's viability. <laughs> Poor Sorry, Jake. Jake. <laughs> this is a yeah. cold world we live in. Shrimpy, defend me. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh it's pretty ridiculous. I mean, he's insane in lane now because he can be just such a bully. Like he, uh, he's gonna out trade everyone in that lane. Like if he's, if he's a solo lane, like his heals are insane now. The talents they give him, like he's just he's just the best support by a large amount. Like he's well, yeah, I, th I think he's the best support right now. He's he's really a really good support. Yeah, he's probably the best hero league support for sure. It sounds he might like be the he best wins. hero besides Li Ming, honestly. Yeah. Maybe. He certainly could be. Second I'm pumped because he's my most played hero in the game, so I'm just ecstatic. But we'll see. We'll see exactly the way the drafts go with Li Ming will not be available in the tournaments for the next two weeks, so the qualifiers will not have Li Ming, but Li Ming will be playable in both EU and NA regionals. All the other heroes that have received changes, that's immediately in effect. There's no way to dodge that. So are we going to go from seeing the Tyrande kill Foss ban every tournament, or is Rhaegar going to become first pick, first ban? That's one of the big questions I have for this weekend, and I'm just I'm just thinking, what, what are you guys expecting from your scrims? Do you think that Rhaegar is going to enter that ban phase more frequently than Tyrande? I think it depends on how much a team's figured out what they can do with Rhaegar, what they can't, how much value they put it with Rhaegar. Yeah. I don't think it's worth like picking a hero. Like, it only heals, kind of. I mean, it does a lot of damage nowadays, but I don't think it would be first pick. I agree. Not I in Europe, at least. Okay. Like, doesn't give enough value. Uh, it, like, it made sense when like Uther was first bit like banned a lot, just because like the power of Divine Shield is just insane. That Rhaegar is just like good all around, but its special healing is not OP. Like, like it's not you know. It doesn't a hundred percent. If you use ancestral healing, like there's still a way you can get a kill through it or like mitigate its value and stuff. Divine shield, if you use it properly, it's going to get its value every single time. True. You know, so I, I don't think he like will see first pick, first ban as much as like. I mean, there are at least situations where he does get banned probably, but it's not going to be like when Uther was like banned out like fifty percent of games, right? I think. Uh, they're, they're a bit different in that. Like, Uther is really good because of his heroic and, like, you know, the stuns he has. But Rhaegar's just good across the board. But, like, nothing is, like, super broken. Like, this is God tier, right? Whereas Divine Shield actually is a game changing heroic. Um, so I, I think that's the difference between the two. I could see him being first fan. Maybe. Yeah, I can see him. It, like, I, he's going to have 100%. Out, people, I think people are going to figure out some weird cheese with. Rhaegar, that's really OP and annoying to play against. And yeah, he's going to start getting banned because of that. There's something you haven't been talking about, but it's, <laughs> it's secret. The Feral totem, Lunch has nothing to do with the Rhaegar totem build auctions. Good. The totem build, the slow uh, Oh, the right place? Sure, and, totem. And Earth Go ahead. It's all about Chain Lightning, man. Or Chain Lightning Shield, excuse me. Well, everyone already knows about the Lightning Shield build. It's Jake. so good, man. Totem builds the future. You see how big those totems were on Liquid Chris's stream? <laughs> that's how you. That's how you pull. It's glitched. Yeah, the new totem talents are very good. Um, what about the the few other assassins that we haven't really touched on? You think about Sergeant Hammer. She's still just gonna be a situational like lesser. Specialist Jake. Well, specialist Jake. Pseudo assassins. All right. She's a 
Butcher. Yeah. Is there any place for those heroes? I mean, we saw Schwimpy. You were rocking that Butcher in uh, in Prague last year, hardcore. You guys were playing Butcher Kerrigan with those flanks. You guys made some really cool uh, things happen on Navi. But we haven't seen a whole lot of Butcher lately out of anyone. Yeah, because cheeses only work once, Jake. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> No, I think it would come back like as a cheese again, probably. But he's if always going to be a cheese. Yeah, Once you forget so. about a cheese, the cheese can be used again. You know, you got to give it like four or five months. People forget, like, like you know how people used to forget about how to play against Kerrigan. You know, like suddenly you bust out Kerrigan in a tournament, and like, oh, you can dodge the combo. I forgot about that, and they remember, and then you know she falls off. You know, <laughs> eventually people will forget about that time Schwimpy bodied people with Butcher, and he'll bust it out. Oh, well, butcher is a little better because now you can't get out of lamb. Yeah, but the problems he still has is still there. He's too all in, so it's like it's easy to counter him. Huh. Now that Falstead is around, it's like. But Falstead with butcher was the classic, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. that so might cool. still come out. We'll see. Well, I'm pro- I'm sure there'll games. be some lamb games coming. Now that it's unavoidable if it, it slanted. Okay. All the other assassins we didn't talk about. Jaina, Rainer, Vala. They're pretty much just exactly where they were. Vala. We talked about Rainer yeah. a little bit. He's dropped a little bit because of the changes to focus attack, but they're all still pretty good. Um, okay. Up next, we're going to talk about very quickly. We want to hear about your 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 China journey for Cloud Nine. We haven't talked to either of you. K one, you've gone there twice now. In Arthalon, you went <laughs> once. Tell us the nightmares, the good and the bad. Oh, man. Well, we had McDonald's every night again, pretty much. <laughs> Just like Pat. <laughs> that, that was the good. Or, well, it turned pretty bad pretty fast, but practice was pretty bad. We got like two hours yeah, of practice. The practice there versus, was really bad. The, same the internet team, cafe was like... like We scrimmed one team... <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty it. Much the whole trip. And yeah, it'd be really laggy like too. And that was all our practice. And yeah, get random lag spikes in the practice area. Yeah, kind of sucked. And then you got a plague. And you guys mm-hmm. lost all your games. Yeah. I mean, we towed EDG. Yeah, they yeah. didn't lose That all was it. pretty good. Well, okay. K1. Okay, hmm? EDG. You definitely- won those game for you guys. Not the other way. <laughs> <laughs> those were some pretty epic throws. <laughs> At least game one. Well, game one. Game two, we just stomped them. But... Yeah, game two was a stomp. But game one was... Game one we could have definitely played better. But, oh, uh, yeah, for sure. There's well, a lot of stuff going on that wasn't good. So all those things that weren't good, and you guys went out there twice, or K1 did, would you go again? And if you if there would have to be changes, what would those changes be to make you travel back to Asia to compete? Hmm. Well, I'd want a better practice area. I don't know how they could guarantee that though. Like I'd want consistent practice with at least three teams. Maybe if there was a league that multiple North American or European teams got invited to, you would have that option. Yeah, it would be nice. Well, part of the problem was, like, we got there and we, like, played the next day. And, like, yeah. we didn't have much time to even do anything. Because it Sports Arena? We had, like, two yeah. hours of practice. And we just day. had a new roster. <laughs> like, yeah. We barely practiced together. So yeah. maybe when you've traveled for events... Have you ever been in situations where you've been just really struggled to be able to practice with against people? Have computers for practice? Has that ever been an issue for you? No, not really. I mean, it, there were some problems on BlizzCon, I guess. But yeah, BlizzCon. That. Well, actually, at the venue, it was a problem. Oh, at, yeah, yeah, at the, the practice area was good though. At the yeah, place. Was the venue was a little weird because like every single team was there in the same area, so it's like you could just go up and watch people scrim. <laughs> Um, but um like they that treated, actually happened yeah they treated the foreigners well because they gave them so much time to get accustomed and not jet lagged they had, they had like two weeks or so yeah. to no, adjust that was pretty lame i remember like the first time i think it was us taylor like a tempo scrimmed like mvp bl- or no we scrimmed D- dk or something 
And then just like we suddenly there like, was like a thirty person crowd like watching. The yeah, just like, like everyone in mind. Uh, we're like we're uh, trying to stream okay. DK here, and there's like forty <laughs> people watching us, so we're not even gonna try hard. It was also weird because there was the WoW people there, Hearthstone people, Starcraft people. It was, I mean, it was cool, but that's not what happened when I, when I went to League events. League gave you or Riot gave you like your own individual room. I know that's how Dota works yeah. too. For the international, you get like an office that they rent out, yeah, and you have five computers, and that's your practice room. It has your team's name on the door. It tells you which hours you get it. Certain teams, like there's there's only a few rooms, and the teams like have time slots each day, and they share yeah. those rooms. Hopefully, accommodations are a little better. I think for just the practice area, you know, hotel and stuff. That that was all good, but the practice area could have been better at BlizzCon. Yeah. So good on opening week, not great during BlizzCon. China was rough. Schwimpy doesn't have any complaints. He just wants to eat a Max's cheeseburger right now. What's the proper pronunciation? Max. Mox. 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 I'm learning all these new things. Excellent. Um, okay, let's go down to spring championships. You guys really wanted to dodge the first NA qualifier as a topic in general. But let's start with with Zoya. How do you think the event went? It okay. So it's actually a, a, a cool talking point. I want to actually get everyone's opinion on because there was, from our perspective, like I got to cast a Chill Gall game. I got to cast a Tychus and then Melee Assassin Great Main game. You know, I got to cast all these games that were fun, but. Then there's also the other side of it where people were bringing up that Bob Ross try hard at every single game. They were, yes, 10 minute stomps, but they didn't, you know, necessarily disrespect their opponents. Um, you know, where do you guys fall? Because, I mean, Cloud Nine, you guys were putting on a great show all weekend. You guys were clearly trolling in the draft. Um, but, you know, do you guys see that as disrespect whenever you guys just have fun drafts versus not as good teams? You know, do you think everyone should try hard? Because personally, I enjoyed those games. I thought they were fun, but, you know, I have a very unique perspective because I'm a caster, right? If I'm casting Cloud if I'm following Cloud9 all day and they're like eight-minute games all day, that is, you know, that's so a boring day. Before but... the players even answer, I'm going to give my perspective. Sure. It's, these players are playing for no prize. They're playing for admission to a tournament. This is their their, their weekend. They want to have fun, right? They want to have a good time, so they're going to have a good time. Two, it's more fun for the viewers to see new and interesting things. And, you know, it, it's definitely going to be cool to see fun and unique drafts in these kind of situations where we get to see heroes we don't normally get to see. And three, even if they were to, to not go super try hard, even if they do play these casual heroes, they're still going to outclass their opponents pretty significantly. So the result's not really going to change. So I don't look at it as disrespect. It's always going to happen. It's like this with every eSport where people will go trolly things. You'll see, I mean, I'm sure you could see like a CSGO game where they just don't spend their money and they just win without actually buying items, right? That same kind of stuff happens if you outclass someone when you're forced to play someone at a tier that's just not even on your own. These guys are professionals. They're sponsored. They're doing it for a living full time. And I think they deserve the freedom to just have fun and do what they want. Not I agree. Have to be try hard, but there was a lot of criticism on Reddit. I saw that. there was there was a lot of angry people like there was that. yeah no, oh yeah <laughs> My, I thought there was only two comments. Gilly's stream was like just filled with that. comments like Bob Ross fan clubs try harding every game with ten minutes like this is so disrespectful from Cloud Nine. I personally think it's fine. Like you know you're putting on a good well, it's fun, but from you know, a player's what? perspective, you never go into a game with like oh we're here to disrespect the opponent. They're so bad. We're yeah, just them with whatever we want. It's just like. Uh, well, we don't want to show our actual drafts or pick actual heroes that we're going to use later on. So let's just have some fun. Pick some heroes that we never ever get to play in competitive. And finally yeah. have some fun with some new heroes that you know no one's seen before or whatever. It, we never have the intention of disrespecting anyone. I think it's, it's just like... It's a, it's a weird criticism to get. It's like that's what happens when you force, you know... The number or the top three teams to face random teams, top forty or whatever. You know, like that's what's going to happen. Yeah, I know. I know it's hard to tell if people are disrespecting in Europe because you guys just do dumb drafts all the time. But <laughs> be like, does this like does this happen often in Europe? Jokes aside, like because um, yeah, this has happened like three or four times now in like the last year for NA. Like someone does like a troll draft it happens at every or something. Tournament. It happens at every tournament. 
Yeah, basically. Does, is this a common thing in the EU? Like, I don't people... think it's very common in Europe. Uh, it happened once it... in Europe when one team didn't pick talents the whole game. Oh, well, that uh, was a little bit. That's a little bit. It was just country. one person. <laughs> one person didn't pick yeah. talents in a tournament it match. Was Lili, like, there was so... a Reddit thread about it or something. Yeah, he went the entire game picking Lily, but um, yeah. you feel the same way as everyone else from B. That's. I mean, it might even be good to pick your retarded stuff because you don't show the others what you play. Like as yeah. Arthron said, it might even be even more try hard to not show. Like I don't know, it might sound retarded, but it's one way to see. It. Like I think it's good to hide picks. Yeah, I mean, if I was one of the amateur teams playing against a pro team, I'd want them to pick troll picks so I have well, a chance. Somebody in chat just said, as a player, I definitely found it disappointing to not get to play Cloud9 against their full potential. But in my opinion, if if you mm. lose to them when they troll comp you, then they're going to beat yeah. you so hard in a try hard comp that you're not going to learn anyways. The skill disparity is too high. This same kind of stuff used to happen to me when I played Smash Brothers. And Mewtwo King would, like, a Korean DJ beat me with Pichu. Pichu was a joke character. But he just busted <laughs> out Pichu, and he just yeah. he just stomped me. And I didn't find it disrespectful. The skill gap is so high that y y you're not going to learn. You're just so, you have so much more learning to do. You'll learn if a team that's around your skill level or close to your skill level, let's just go with, like, I'm not even going to give a uh, reference because that's just, setting myself up to look like a jerk. Um, <laughs> a team that was close to your skill level didn't play try hard, and they happened to drop a game to you, you don't learn to that either, and they don't learn from it. So it's there's just there's no winning situation necessarily when there's a massive skill gap. It's yeah. it's just how it is. Yeah, I only want to bring it up just because like it seemed like there was a decent amount of reaction to it. I mean, our chat was filled with it, and I know there was a Reddit thread, uh, but I think everyone here like, just agrees, like, you know, there's 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 both perfect like you know competitive value in it from hiding stuff as well as it puts on each other. like that one game where cloud nine which i want to ask you guys what are your thoughts on our tannis but they picked our tannis and they almost lost a game our tannis is shit <laughs> that's what i learned <laughs> here didn't do anything King Kathy played our tannis and it was literally a 4v5 the entire time so uh, but you know that that game was actually exciting to cast like there was a situation where an unknown team an up and coming team had a really close game versus Cloud9. Next game was an eight-minute win because it was a curse timing with a boss, and that was that was you know just an insane push. But um, you know that game was actually exciting to cast. It was fun, you know. Yeah. Um, and we wouldn't like if if they would have tryharded, you know, we would have had two of those curse solo games. So I don't. Know, I, I I like I like the people will find something to complain about anything. Yeah. So I, I just guess. don't pay much attention to that stuff. It's like yeah. being disrespectful to your opponents. I'm like, no. <laughs> it's nothing a qualifier with no prizing. You can only expect I mean, so much of the players. More yeah. fun to watch, more fun to play. More fun to play. I'm with yeah. you. Yeah. Our tennis, though, not fun to not play. Fun. <laughs> not fun. Not fun to play. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't watch the games... I don't remember which team it was with. I opened the bracket of my ability, but Cloud9 on Sky Temple ran our tennis, and... Um, <laughs> He did like less damage than the supports. Oh, <laughs> it was. No. It was uh, now I don't know how I, I feel. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was a fun game. But uh, I think the the qualifier was a lot of fun. I, I mean, you asked me what I thought. I know that turned into a discussion, but I liked the qualifier. Um, we had really good games. Uh, once we got towards the end of the bracket, um, Cloud Nine versus Cognitive set. If you didn't check that out, the new Cognitive looks really solid. Uh, much be like enough bad teams has dis have disbanded that the good players from those bad teams are on the same team now. So we might actually have you know more than one good team in NA for the ones. But that's oh, the cognitive. nicest thing you've ever Definitely. said about cognitive in your life, Soya. Uh, they looked good. That was a really yeah, good yeah. game. Cognitive definitely at least top three. Maybe I don't, I want to see them versus Bob Ross. I think it'd be a good set. At least top three. Tempo Storm in that fourth place dumpster. Maybe mm. fourth. <laughs> oh, oh, man. All right. Last two times we played Blaze, we've lost to them. So just saying. Or maybe last one time we played Blaze, we lost them in tournament. All right, dumpster, dumpster storm confirmed, boys. I'm, I'm honest about all teams, even my own. We might not be fourth. We'll have to see the next time we play Blaze because last time we lost to them and enter the storm. Well, at the end of the day for North Where America... The teams that qualified were Bob Ross Fan Club not dropping a single game, and then Cloud9 that dropped one game in the semifinal qualifier match versus COG. Yeah. Right. You guys dropped one game. Um, Blaze, COG, 
both looking pretty good. Tempo Storm, some stuff to improve, definitely. Uh, some weird drafting, definitely. It, uh, it blows my mind, man. Like, we draft, like, try hard and half. Like, we just draft, like, OP picks in scrim sometimes, like, most of the time. And we just, like, we get good results. And then in tournaments, it's just like, let's draft Goku. Let's draft Diablo. Goku hasn't played him in three months, and let's put Goku on Diablo. Dude, like, the lightning breath was so bad. Uh, well, lightning breath <laughs> i wanted to pull my hair out it never did anything he just died he cast lightning breath and he died every time one time need, it had effect we don't need to talk about that lightning breath jake <sighs> i was it's tilted man <laughs> i thought the diablo pick could have worked with a pox but i'm sad i'm so shrimpy do you like lightning breath uh, i prefer a pox see sure. i like a pox better too see but why are you telling me, man? Breath. I'm telling you, Jared. It's all your fault. Take responsibility. I'm not the coach anymore. Man up. Just, that being said, Tempo looked really good at uh, esports arena. Yeah, yeah, they did. It didn't look so good versus Bob Ross this time around, though. No, no, that was. That was tough. There's definitely uh, things we're working on. Um, we've changed how we do everything based off of this last uh, tournament. We had a big team meeting, and um, drafting is going to be done by different people you know we're, every, everything is getting changed because I, I, honestly we do have solid results in scrims like I, I say this every week like our scrims look you know we trade with cloud nine we trade with bob ross we trade with cognitive like we have good results in scrims it's just in tournaments um we like it's like they try to like we can't beat them drafting standard so let's surprise them with this stuff because they've let's seen go us Zagara, draft standard. as Vikings. Yeah, it's like we just like <laughs> get in the middle of the tournament just, you know, draft silly stuff. So, it's uh, you know, we we're, we're we're working on it. All right. Well, you guys got three more chances. I think there's a very good chance Tempo Storm will qualify. I'd be shocked if you guys didn't. On the European side, we have the second qualifier here for Europe. And Shrimpy, congrats, man. You guys qualified you. for Katowice. Yeah, probably should have done that first week, but oh, what happened? we fucked up. I don't know. Like, we played... I, I guess we played good the, on the Saturday, but we didn't really face good teams. And then, like, we had to play the semis on Sunday, and we just had a bad day, I think. And Google played, like, really solid, like... They were not a bad team that day. So a lot of so. there's been a lot of criticism about Google saying they're patch zergs, which means they're good on a new patch. Do you think that's true, or they're just a solid team as a whole? Like you've played they're against EU them. Murloc geniuses. Yeah, I mean, essentially, yes. I mean, they have good players, or yeah, yeah. I mean, the players are fine, known as toxic. Uh, I don't know if they can make it work. I think they will be a top team. Uh, not maybe top top, but you know, like they will stay high. Cool. Um, that's good to have a new face, and obviously they can try to grab a sponsor. Um, for you in general, uh, Fnatic's a big move. You and the Pharaoh, you know, you had the 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 shortest honeymoon with Dignitas. In esports history, like you were just like from Navi to Dig, and then suddenly fanatic. Tell us, tell us the story, Shrimpy. The real story? Or yeah, the story? no, we want the real story, man. Give us the juice. <laughs> okay, so didn't go as planned, you know. We didn't really have a shot caller or a drafter in Dig, and then we played a dream hack and we lost to Liquid. Uh, I mean, we could have won all games, so. We all thought it was fine, and after that, like suddenly one player wanted to go back to his old team. Uh, so we were four people, and then we tried out different people and didn't really work out. Then we tried to merge with the or with Liquid, and as you probably heard, that didn't work out either. <laughs> and then. Like, we tried to make Dignitas work again, but, and, you know, we couldn't really, like, find the five players we wanted. And then Mene left the Navi and Frantic just offered us two spots, like me and Athero. So it was pretty, pretty nice. easy decision, to be honest. They had a stable roster and we worked fine together. 
Who's on the roster now? Fnatic. Fnatic? Yeah. Quacknix, Breeze, Mexi Style, me and Atero. Is, is uh, Breeze still shot calling? Nah, he has never been the shot caller, I think. He has calls in fights, like targets. Wait. You mean, you mean he dead. screams in fights because at Prague, <laughs> that kid was intense. Like, I've never been around someone like that in a tournament before. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. He's awesome. On lands, like, it's it's sick. But Quacknix is doing shot calling and drafting. So, yeah, it works out really good, you know? Like, we, we have fun. We play good. So. It's a good question well, in chat. your team plays good. <laughs> Oof. Damn. Yeah. Plays well. Plays well, thank you, Taylor. English. So there's a good question in chat about you guys becoming scrim partners with MVP Black. Can you talk about that a little bit? Because you guys have been scrimming with MVP Black, correct? No. I, you, guys definitely, you guys definitely scrimmed with them. I read that somewhere. I was gonna say, isn't that you can't do that? Isn't there too much ping from yeah. Korea to Europe? Or yeah, Korea to Europe would be insane. Jake, like what are you much, talking who about? Who played how with much, MVP Black? There was definitely a European team that was playing with them, and then somebody posted in chat. <laughs> I don't know. We didn't. Playing from NA to Korea is, like, bad. <laughs> Europe to Korea? Huh. That'd be, like, 400 yeah, how much, games. Is that actually 400? Like, I'm not sure how much that would be, but... Where did I read seems that? Seems like a lot. Huh, okay. Very well. Um, so yeah, so now we know that we have Google, Dignitas, Fnatic, and what Team Liquid. What are these EU team names, by the way? Like Team Sandwich Monkey, TSM. TSM is like ADRD, BKB. Well, yeah, I know the players. It's just troll. Well, yeah, they, I mean, they Google just, versus they TSM. And it's like, oh, it's not TSM. It's Sandwich Monkeys. It's like, oh, okay. I mean, it's not like we can be, say much more. We got Murloc Geniuses, Bob Ross Fan Club. Uh, we got troll team names. I don't know. I think I think they're on another tier than we are. Probably. When your team name's Google, that's <laughs> that is I mean, a bit weird. That's that's next level. Don't yeah. they have two monkey teams in Europe? I think we have three. Monkey I mean, they're teams. all monkeys, but three monkey teams. Yeah. Swippy says like he. I think they have three. What? <laughs> <laughs> what are the other ones? Team sandwich monkeys, monkeys of the storm. And um, what is the last one? Wait. <laughs> There's three? Yeah. I knew those two. You guys need to stop monkeying around. <laughs> we had to cast monkeys of the Cut to a break, Jake. Monkeys. I need a I need a moment after that one. <laughs> after the monkeys? Arth one. Full troll. Yeah, I don't know. I, don't know. Um, I think there's one more. Do you think, because I think it was pretty much agreed that like around the dream hack time, Swimpy, EU was like in this state of like, just like they're completely lost. Like oh, yeah. all the teams were pretty bad. No one really seemed to have a clue around the meta. Um, what do you think about it right now? Do you think you guys are, you know, in a good place overall, or do you still think you know there's still some issues? Because before, you, everyone used to say Europe had the most depth when it came to a region. Like there were so many just solid teams. Uh, but after DreamHack, it just kind of looked like the EU was just had no idea how to draft. How to, like the teams were going through all these roster changes. Now that seems to be slowing down just a little bit. You know, what do you think? Uh, I mean, at DreamHack, it was terrible. I think all yeah. the EU teams were pretty trash, to be honest. Like, yeah, probably worse than any even. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then, like now, I think it's okay. I guess. I mean, I think. Back to better than the, the Asia. Asia might be better. You think Asia might be better than Europe? Probably better. Probably better? You sure? Just probably? Uh, we will see when the metas clash. I mean, yeah. <laughs> like, everyone adapted to European meta in, in BlizzCon. It felt like at least Asian teams did. Like, they tried to adapt to us and not us to them. So we will see, like, when the global tournament comes. Yeah. You guys confident you can qualify for Korea? Feels good right now. Like, that's what the roster swap was for, for Korea. I mean, I think we have the best shot caller and drafter in Europe. Yeah. So, so is that the best shot caller by far. Quacknicks. Quacknicks? Yep. I've never heard of Quacknicks. I've seen him before. I haven't really yep. watched him play. He 
played for Pirates in Pajamas in Prague. Yeah, I didn't yeah. even know that was. But he's been pirates, for... pirates in pajamas. They have pirates too. You got how little did you two watch Europe? Pirates in Pajamas is awesome, man. Well, they were. Well, when like they, they have right roster changes going in every week. Yeah, yeah it's, like kind of hard to keep track. What's Aiden, going on? Aiden, and then like half the team names are like, like Pirates in Pajamas. That's you know obviously Ninjas in Pajamas right. are the sponsor team. So it's like you don't even <laughs> know if teams are sponsored or not. It's like it's really confusing. <laughs> So I wanted to ask you guys, since both of you have, or all three of you have already qualified for the, your respective regionals, last year that wasn't the case. Each qualifier had prize money, and you could continue to compete in each one. So in theory, one team could win every qualifier. That's not the case with this one. You guys actually are not allowed to enter the future qualifiers, correct? Yep. Correct. Yeah. 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 So well, in, there's in, no point. There's no there's money. No, there's no yeah. point, Why but would you play? there's also no practice. And do you think that... That's that's actually an issue more so for Europe because I think Europe has has more teams in America. I don't think there's as much. I don't think it's as valuable for those kind of events. But you know, just in general, you're you're going. What do you mean by no practice? Well, not tournament practice versus scrim practice is different in every situation. I mean, in every right, a tournament is there's a, a, a different mentality. No matter how much you play, there's a slightly different mentality. I'd say it's an advantage if anything because then you yeah, just get absolutely. to watch every team play. And it's not like you get to watch level. every team play, but every team wants to scrim you because they're not going to play you in the next qualifier that they uh, need yeah, to qualify exactly. for. So like, they're just the go-to to scrim part. Like at Cloud9 and Bob Ross, everyone wants to scrim them because guess what? This next qualifier Sunday, you're not going to be playing either of those teams. Yeah, good point. You guys uh, agree? I, it's, uh, I agree with Arthur. It's looking banished. Yeah. <laughs> Makes yeah, complete sense. At, at, at this point, like with these tier of players, like Schwimpy, K1, Arth, they've got enough tournament experience that they don't need to like play in tournaments to, you know as practice. that's true like if you're a team that needs tournament experience yeah. badly like sure yeah maybe for some teams this all of them would be yeah. better but yeah but this this is uh for these guys i mean i'm sure they would love to like just not reveal strats for the next month and just or just you know, not play a few teams or, just have not a, play. or not have to play all day for nothing it's nice yeah. too yeah 9 a.m starts are fun aren't they guys 12 p.m here eastern master race that's you're right east coast yeah, he's East yeah. Coast, though. Well, not East Coast. I'm in Indiana. It's about as western of East you can get. Yeah, okay. Basically Midwest. Yeah. Um, all right. So you guys got a few weeks off. There's still two more qualifiers for EU. I just think it's the next two weekends. NA has three more, and it's jam-packed. It's actually this coming weekend for NA. <laughs> so it's it's Sunday, and then the next one is like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Yep. At night, like starting at like 9 p.m. Like for each one, or is that just one? That's, one. that's all That's the third one. qualifier. It's gonna, yeah. if it ends early, we end early. Well, but thank the schedule God. Is we don't yeah. have to play that. Hopefully, <laughs> my team qualifies this Sunday because, man, that will, that's gonna be a brutal yeah. one. So, yeah, there's the weekday one, which is gonna be, whew, yeah, that's weird. And then the last one is the Sunday, is two Sundays from now. So, after that, there's then a, one break for NA. And then it's regionals. There's like so there's a weekend off, and then it's regionals, and then for EU it's the weekend after that. So the first weekend of March is going to be Katowice, which is IEM. So it shares a, a venue with like CS:GO. Is it just CS:GO? CS:GO League, League. Starcraft. Ah, it's geez. so stupid. Like it's gonna be zero crowd, obviously. Like <laughs> CS:GO is so huge yeah. in Katowice. It's yeah. insane. Yeah, and then isn't the uh, and I event just like a standalone, right? Though it's just like a sta its own event at. They haven't announced, so there's nothing like attached to it. So yeah, they haven't announced um, anything. They just, I mean, they haven't announced they've been anything. They've saying LA, ESL yeah. Heroes of the Storm LA. On the website, it says it's in Burbank. Oh god, that it's probably the Burbank studio if it's ESL, but they could run in a venue, so who knows? Yeah, we're probably gonna wind up just playing in the studio with like no crowd. Their studio does <laughs> have a crowd. They they can they do they have can accommodate a couple hundred or WCS. The one we played in. Yeah, they they transform it more than you'd think. Oh, uh, still. Like I've seen them fit. I've that. seen them fit about a, a couple hundred in the crowd where you played for WCA. You remember that? The first land in the ESL Studio versus Cloud Nine, where you guys came back and won. Mm. Hopefully, it's more of a Vegas event. Yeah, it's possible, but it doesn't. Seem I, didn't like spoil, I didn't spoil anything. It says on the e Heroes Esports website, Burbank. Like, this isn't like somebody just like was peeing on those guys. It says on the yeah, website. It's Burbank. That means it's smack dab in the ESL place. So yeah. 
It's pretty likely, but who knows? They haven't said anything, so we can still hope that it's a different venue. Who knows? It still would be a good production regardless. For online viewers, it doesn't make that much of a difference to have a live audience. But for some players, they, they really... Oh, for it's live the, players, the, it's the really adrenaline, weird. The adrenaline. It's weird? You don't like it? Well, it's like... You're like, okay, you need to walk out here and act excited and oh, like cheer oh, and stuff. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> bro, I was saying, there's I was no crowd. Of, I was going to say a lot of players feed off the crowd. But yeah, yeah. They, they, for us, when we did the the opening weekend cast, you guys would be walking onto the stage. And normally it was like hype music playing for production where it's like, dun, 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 dun. They cut that for casters. Oh, yeah, it was completely so silent. It's dead silence. And we just hear yeah. you guys going, dun, dun. To, 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 to walking onto the stage just like footsteps yeah, we're just really sitting there like weird. and then we gotta hype up the next team we're just like and it's cloud night and <laughs> it was so awkward um just production things but all right well those are coming up soon are you guys ready for viewer questions i'm always ready all right, I need one second to fix to set this wow, up. Wow, that was anticlimactic. <laughs> Are you guys ready? Well, hold, for on, some hold on, hold on, hold on. We didn't talk about the matchmaking change. Ah. Oh. <clears throat> oh. <clears throat> what did they change? Much. They just made it to where it's more frequent that you will get you'll hear a league. Rank you'll one. play with people who are rank one to rank four. Yeah. So like it'll be very oh. much less likely that you'll end up with like rank thirties or people still doing their placement match and stuff. You're more consistently going to be getting people who have a high rank. I don't think the issue is ranks though. It's more of MMR. There's such a large MMR difference. Yeah. I mean, just rank so many... one players so that doesn't really matter too like, much. Like you'll no longer get that random rank twenty whatever. I guess that does matter because you won't get any more people that are in their placements. Yeah, I I, that, day, I, I got a lot of p- players on my placements or on yeah. their placements in my games. And Mars like the most important for sure. But, like the other day, Glauron went on like an eight-game losing streak, and he was like rank three or two or something. It's like he's on Mars still higher than every other rank one player, basically. So, so weird. Yeah, you know, like rank is Dude. it so should be based off rank. What if you just like intentionally lost? You got to like rank ten. That way, you only played against like rank five max players. You just it so showed you just the world how to game the system. Wiz God's gonna be all yeah. over it, man. I just thought of that right now. Wiz God. <laughs> yeah, it's like I mean, it's it's probably overall a better. It's it's definitely gonna be better than before. Like you know, there's no way this is. It's gonna be like not this different, right? It's definitely gonna be better than it's... before, but it's not the right change. You know, for me, it doesn't make enough of a difference to like make me want to play though. They need to have Grandmaster League already and better draft system to make me want to play a Hero League. Hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. soon. Yeah. Well, it's a rare night where we're actually getting to viewer questions, so you can join the Discord server. You can type exclamation point Discord here in chat to get the link or just scroll below the actual stream, and the link is there. Uh, we will so first pull- time we've done viewer questions, so you three need to be like... For a norm- we've done it once. We did it on the like the holiday episode, yeah. like for like an actual normal episode. This is the first time we've done viewer questions. So. Yeah, this is designed for some of our slower weeks where we can just pull people in, give them voice, and if please try to keep it PG enough. If you if you you need to Jake, join, saying that's gonna make the trolls. I click can the kick link. them, so I'm just saying I will kick you if I have to. I'm not um, afraid of a kick. <laughs> They're gonna be here now, Jake. You summoned them. <laughs> If there's anyone who knows about trolls, it's me. I'll handle them. Do you remember Poop Feast 420 back in the State yeah, of the Game days, man? Match. Poop Feast 420. One of the best, best names. Uh, you have to join a voice channel to be pulled in. I see that uh, Dreadnought was the first one. It's not the, the real Dreadnought. It's a fake Dreadnought. It's the real Dreadnought. It's just not temp- like Tempo Dread. Okay, he's real, Jake. How inconsiderate could you be? He is a real person. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's not go with those <laughs> roles on this person. What if he doesn't want to be real? That is true. I am sorry, Dreadnought, if I offended you in any way. Um, you can be fake. You know, that's all you. He's, he's okay? got us muted, man. He, he, he's, he's getting kicked. You got us muted, bro. All right. Someone named Sugar. Hi, Sugar. Welcome to the show. Yeah. Hi, Sugar. Can Sugar? we hear them from Skype? Yeah, you'll, you'll be able to. Yeah, you'll, he's he's to you'll be able to. Keep They're not talking about it. Okay. Jake's got oh, should I go on Discord? No, no, you're good. Jake can feed it through it to us. Yeah. 
He's, he's oh. got production things. That's crazy. Yeah, he's got like the setup and stuff. It's crazy, man. It's Sugar, like... are you real? Sugar. Your mic's muted, bro. Sugar. <laughs> yes, yes please. please. Try again later, Sugar. Up next, we're going to get someone. <laughs> Some of these names. Uh, we're going to go with Eclipse. This is going well so far. Hi, Eclipse. Boys. Welcome to the show. This is why I never did it, man. I was afraid this would happen. Well, this is why you do it through Skype. Discord's like hard to oh, use, man. No. It's if, not intuitive. Am I blundering? Uh, was this Jake's this goof was, the whole this time? This is my goof. This is my goof the whole time. Wow! Hi, First Eclipse. you shit talk my friend Dreadnought, and then you no, do this? No, he was actually muted. Dreadnought was actually muted. Sugar, I bet. Sugar was talking. Eclipse, do you have, can we hear you? It's still not working. I'm going to restart Discord. Maybe it was my fault. We're going to restart wait, Discord wait, wait. because I hear nothing. You said he could do this, Zoya. I did, man. I was hyping Jake up. I was like, my boy Jake. <laughs> my boy Jake's got this Discord shit down. I he is ready for them, viewer Collins. Finally, we're here. We're going to start making that money. I thought questions was going to be like from the thread. Or no, man. Twitch. We're going full ham. Oh, but you get to hear the trolls in person. Oh, there are the sound effects. I had to restart Discord. That was the issue. Eclipse? Uh -oh. Uh oh. Oh. What's up, man? Welcome to the show. Hello. Hey, You're a robot. Man. You're a robot, bro. Oh. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, I guess it's been my dream to be a robot, but anyway. I agree. So, yeah. Is he gone? <laughs> You know, you bring up really good points. I do think that if there was a Sexiest Man in Heroes award, it would go to me. You are 100% of right, Clips. Thank you for Same. your question. Next one. Let's move on. <laughs> um, Shane Goocher. Hi, Shane Goocher. Oh. Oh. Hello. Oh, he's not a robot. Shane. What's up, man? Human. Oh, Is that the Shane Goocher? How, how, oh, man. How are you, uh, gentlemen? tonight hey uh, what's up dude great nothing i'm just i'm just We're hanging good. out having a good time i just woke up do you have a, wow. you have a, a wake up question for us uh, um oh he just wants to stop by and say hi it's good to see you man how are you much. been you know like zoe has got it i i just wanted to say hello and how are you yeah, man how, how's the job been i know you've been working some crazy hours and stuff yeah, uh, did, nice, did nice you give brutal, like nice you gave birth brutal, the, like you you uh, helped you didn't. You did not give birth. <laughs> you no, you uh, delivered a baby. Personally. Is the is the phrase I'm looking for? Uh, yeah, I delivered a baby like a week ago. It was, it was uh an experience. That's all I'm gonna say. I said keep it PG. Thank it was you. an experience. Arthlon, do you have a question for Shane Gucher? I thought this was. We're going reverse. We're going I thought reverse. I was supposed to be one giving the questions right. here. Questions, but I don't have any questions, so I'm not really adding any value. I'm I'm sorry. Well, thanks, Shane. Man, it was good talking to you, bro. Yeah, thanks, Shane. Stay sexy. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Is the uh, y'all are handsome, and I love you, and uh, I can't wait to uh, see more of you. I guess. Thanks, man. Love you, Shane. All right, Decky <coughs> Auto. Oh, oh, I went I the wrong it. call. There we go. There we go. We got this. Decky, what's up, man? What is up? Oh, what's up, dude? You got a good question Not for us? Much. Something juicy? Uh. It's nothing juicy, but basically, I'll get straight to the point. My question is, should Blizzard, when they release new heroes, release them slightly overtuned and then bring them more in line with other heroes? Because Li Ming, she's a great hero. Her damage is a little high, in my opinion, uh, but overall great hero. But do you think Blizzard should release more heroes like that? and then tune them down rather than just release crappy heroes. Well, in a perfect world, you know, you release balanced heroes. <laughs> but for, you know, it's hard I mean, to do that. If they so want to make have, money, yeah. they should do that. Yeah, I, yeah everyone I buy Lee Ming. It, no. yeah, at least so. It's probably I, not I, as strong I, as Lee Ming. Like, I'd actually rather have OP heroes for balance reasons because I think it's easier to tone a hero down than to absolutely. buff up. Stupid, dumb hero. Up yeah, that's true. Without changing anything in your way. Like, if you have an OP hero, you can just nerf their numbers. They still have their kit intact. But when you have, like, a broken hero, it's like you have to either add stuff to the kit or, like, whatever. 
to make them better. Yeah, we want talent Lunara. And stuff. Release Lunara. Exactly. Lunara. You want a Lunara or do you want Li Ming? I'd prefer Li Ming any day. Great question. I yeah, I think I agree. Uh, isn't that how League of Legends kind of does it? Aren't the new heroes kind of always OP? No, what happens in League is like if the hero's bad, they like they go ham with buffs until that hero's good. Like they force <laughs> that hero to be good until it's good, and then they nerf it afterwards. All right, thanks for the question, Decky. Thanks, Decky. Take care, gentlemen. We're gonna give Sugar another shot. Sugar. Sugar. What's up, Jake? Hey, hey man. What's your question? Um, so with Kael'thas, with Kael'thas on schedule to be uh, toned down a little bit, how do you feel about Li Ming being a lot stronger? With Kael, would should Kael'thas still be uh, nerfed a little? I want Ignite back. That's all I want. <laughs> okay, Ignite was the worst talent. That was so much fun. That was way more fun. So you has always been a boring hero. Oh, come on. I think Hell everybody up. agrees with me here. I do. <laughs> you just run away from everyone with that hero. Yeah. I, I think, <laughs> I think uh, when, at least in the current iteration of Kel'Thas, when, like, I, like when you're like, oh, and Kel'Thas, you know, wipes the enemy team, it's not because Kel'Thas outplayed the enemy team it's because yeah. the enemy team clunked up and lost at the kt like that means they were just too stacked so yeah i i agree he's the less one but it, to answer the question um uh, i mean they both need to be nerfed I think. yeah they both need to be nerfed is the answer to that i, I think leaving way too like, strong they need to just remove chain bomb and then add more to this kit or something just remove chain bomb yeah i mean yeah <laughs> i mean they've already like what tweaked it like two or three times yeah, it is what makes him ridiculous. But a lot of people are complaining about the shield too. Arcane barrier is ridiculous. I think it yeah. needs. Oh. He, well, he needs something, right? But he does have gravity laps, which is defense in a way. Well, here's the thing: arcane barrier has always been there, but when ignite was an option, people took ignite, so that would solve the issue. No one would take oh, arcane barrier boy. if ignite was back. Okay, that's the worst. Do not logic. listen to our flawed <laughs> lizard, please. Bring back Ignite. I think Ignite was better than Chain Bomb. Yeah, I agree. Right now, it's. I thought it was healthier gameplay than it's like, Chain Bomb is. Probably, yeah, like probably the range skill, was a little too, the range reward. was a little too high, but you're actually rewarded for like landing your skills, and then the Chain Bomb is just like. <laughs> if there's a way to like, I, I personally think, think it's a fun build. Um, we saw Cloud Nine busted out at Esports Arena. The Q build, the current iteration of the Q build, that's kind of fun. Uh, I like the, dub like the double proc on Flame Strike and the Crease Rage. I think that's a fun way to play them. Maybe if they can like tweak that to make that more viable uh, without it being like abusive, um, you know. But I, I think I agree with everyone with like the removing of Chain Bomb. It's just because when it when it gets its like it, it's it does so much damage to structures like sieging. Like if you Chain Bomb like the front wall, like it's immediately like half health, like. You know, and yeah. it's not like the skill of the cl like. Oh, clearly, there is skill involved, but when Chain Bomb wins you a team fight, it's just because of the enemy team goof. That's not like, that's not a fun way to play. So. Well, I thought a much better option was going to be they would tone Ignite's damage down. Like Ignite applies Chain or Living Bomb, but it's reduced by like fifty percent or something. Oh. But instead, they just made it Fury of the shit well. Like, I don't think you can like tweak the numbers on it because like let's just say like just say you remove the talent fission bomb you know that's like it's still not a fun play style like i think they just have yeah. to completely redesign how he's played right now like don't make his kit makes sense for like the lore and stuff but like they just need to maybe new talents or something i don't know there's a lot of options they could do sounds good cool well thanks for the question sugar thanks sugar yeah. oh, i dropped him in a, in a private channel swimpy yeah. What time is it, bro? Are you tired? 3.20 a.m. We're not going right, to go damn. much longer. Next viewer question. Hey, viewer, whoever we pull in here, ask a question for Shwimpy, man. He's not, he's not telling the viewers what's up. Damn. Let's see if we got a question for Shwimpy. I can't drag far enough. Ugh. Shoshin, what's up, man? Hey. You got a question for us? I don't know if you're watching the stream, but Swimpy really needs yeah. a question right now. 
Um, just wondering if uh, how they feel about the pace of content releases, um, whether that's um, been good for the game, and I guess what the what they think they need uh, the community needs to grow um, faster. Or is it growing fast enough? What uh, if meeting their expectations? If they think this game's going to be as big as they thought when they started playing it professionally. Shwimpy answer first. I'm not taking this one. <laughs> Damn it, Shwimpy. I'm taking well, the next. Uh, the, based off when we, like, Dodge. I don't think anyone's going to say when we first got into Heroes, this is where we thought it would be at this point. It's definitely a lot smaller. Um, your viewership in Twitch is definitely way lower than any of us thought it was yep. going to be. Um, so it, from that perspective, it's definitely, like, Nowhere near met nowhere near met expectations for where we would be right now. However, the current pace they're releasing content, like the last month, the way they've been doing the patches, the way Dustin Browder has been very vocal as a uh, developer, I think everything right now is on the right track. It just needed to happen a year ago. I think the biggest issue is matchmaking, and that still isn't fixed. Yeah, it's like the big tournaments have viewers. Right, the Blizzard tournaments yeah. have yeah. big viewers. I think like, tournament-wise, the game's in a healthy spot. There's, there's a good no prize point to money. watch a stream. Why would you want to watch someone play Hero League? It's so pointless. Yeah. Rank one. The latter rank is one. the actual game itself is just not very watchable. Yeah. I think. Look at the top Still streamers is... of Chewy and Grubby. They're like both. They're entertainers, right? You watch them because they're fu they are fun themselves. That's why pro streams aren't successful because most pros. You know, there aren't like, you know, K1 Pro is just charismatic, like, you know, hilarious guy, you know. If no, if there's no ladder, like, nobody cares about the ladder, so why would you want to watch the best we're players? We're still in preseason, like, to improve it's yourself. a joke. Like, I don't know how we're still in preseason when the game's been launched for, well, what, that, that eight was, months, nine that months? That was, uh, you know, something we've said a lot, just the fact that, like, you can follow a Hearthstone sermon and you can see their progression. They're, like, Legend 28, and that, and you can tune in tomorrow, and they fell to 45, but that's at least, like, a, a storyline. But there's no... Without Grandmaster, which they announced how long ago now? Six, seven months ago, and there's still no foreseeable future for it? It's months away? I don't know. It's taken a long time. Feels bad, man. I think we're all a little. I mean, the game's great, and the game, the Blizzard's the the new approach they're taking, uh, in the recent weeks where they have more frequent updates, is infinitely, infinitely better. But I think you we know, all expected the game to be a little bit. For a beta, this further. game is great. One day we'll get the launch and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's basically how it is. Is like, still beta, I guess. Okay. Um. If they keep doing what they're doing right now, though, we will. We the, so 2016 will be a good year for the development of the game. Like right now, I think, you know, they, they release micro uh, balance patches. You know, they're constantly updating us. They, there seems to be things in the works. Like we just we've gotten what two matchmaking patches in the last month, two months. You know, like they're, they're doing it now. Um, so 2017 is going to be the year, of heroes, boys. Remember, Hopefully. if if you're looking to get into these calls and you're on Discord, you need to join a voice channel to be eligible to be pulled in. A lot of people are posting questions, but they're not in voice channels, therefore they're illegible. Take we're pulling in a risky name. Welcome, Penn Island. Penn Island. Oh, hello. Huh? What's what's your question, man? What's up, Jake? What's so awesome about um, Penn what's Island? It called? My question Penn Island. is, what's it called? Do you think they nerfed? Nova in order to make space for Ling Mi. I don't think that has anything to do with. No, what do you mean? I think they nerfed Nova just because she was toxic. <laughs> Her play style. Yeah, yeah. that's just what I'm thinking. For like Hero League, for like the casual player, it's really toxic to just walk around and get Two, one shot. Move them running feel like she can't reset anything. her trait over and over again. So. No, well, I mean. Li Ming is like her own beast that needs to be addressed, like individually. But I don't think like they nerfed Nova to make room for her because Nova wasn't really taking up space before. Like maybe in like <laughs> true, quick match, <laughs> quick match she had a place, I guess, but not in competitive. Um, Nova was like very rarely picked. Yeah. To like little okay. success. That's it. I'm just curious to see your problem. All right, man. Well, thanks for the question, question Penis Land. It's Penn Island. God. My bad. Penn Island. I can't. I saw the name and I thought Penn. You know. Okay, I see it now. Penn Island. Got it. Cool. That's where the space goes. Heiswick. He Heiswick. dodged. He dodged so fast. He was out of there. He's like, I'm not ready, Jake. He dodged. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna try. 
Cassif, welcome to the show, man. Hey, how you guys doing today? Good, That's yourself? Up, good, good. Great. I got a question for, for the pros, so Zoya, you can shut up right now. Oh, okay, thanks, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, of the heroes that are viable in the current meta, who is your least favorite one to play? <laughs> Oof. That's easy, guys. You are bad at this game. Who do I want I to mean, play the least? Can I name tanks? Yes, name the tank. <laughs> I never play tanks. Uh, I don't like Uther as a support player. I don't think Uther's fun. He said the I pros. Don't like Joanna. Joanna is Yeah, super Joanna is hands down the most boring player to hear the play in the game. Like yeah. by far. Who no warrior main loves playing. That's Joanna. true. If if Chogol ever comes to think, Gaul is definitely Snooze yeah. Town, USA. I feel like I'm always on fun heroes. <laughs> Probably just Kael'thas is the one I hate most that I have to play sometimes. I love Kael'thas. Uh, yeah, it's nice to have Arth. He <laughs> loves that hero. He can play it every time. I think Zagara, because like, I don't hate playing Zagara. I just feel bad when I play her. I'm like, I'm sorry that I'm playing this hero. Yeah. I'm sorry. Hate the, hate the game, not the player. All right. Thanks for the question, Kastif. Yeah, thanks, guys. All right. Um, Rug MD, welcome, man. Oh, shit. Oh, sorry. Dude. <laughs> I'm Watch your fucking you language. Yeah, damn. <laughs> I had no this idea. is a family show. You got a question for us? No. I know you got to mute that stream. I think he's trying to mute the stream. Yeah, yeah. Give him a mute. I just did. Nice. What's up, Rogue MD? How okay. you doing, man? Not too bad, man. How you doing? Oh, you know, I'm doing. What can we do for you? you? Doing? Um, well, uh, I'm going to ask one of the questions from the chat just to shut this guy up. What about the DPS mouth meta? The what? DPS mouth meta? That's a troll question. <laughs> DPS mouth is trash. <laughs> no, actually, Jake, I was going to ask you, what's the deal with your tournament? Ah, I can't announce anything yet. Uh, um, it's in progress. It's It's very much a something to work on but with heroes of the dorm and with you know regionals and all these other events it's a little bit crowded right now but you have I just, a name for it i do and I'm yes not, I'm not i've seen to the overlays too they look good yeah yeah there's it's it's definitely a thing it's just not ready yet but it will be there it's got a great name that's, i'll give oh, I, have, no. I have tell to me give the tell me the name i have to give the viewers Message something me. they asked the question it's got a great name tell me that's Anything all I'm to do say. with Bloodlust? No, it's not. I said a great name. That name would tilt me. <laughs> Is it related to the word heroes or the word storm in any way? No. All right, good. Dude, we, that's like every we, tournament. Our show is called Town Hall. We didn't call it Nexus or Storm like every other podcast Town for a reason. Hall I, I hate heroes. that. Okay. It has Town heroes, Hall. Heroes. That's because Town Hall, brands, branding goes across multiple games. Yeah, Town Hall Overwatch launches like Maybe next week. Oh. There's gonna be a town hall Overwatch. Yeah, is that like you guys related? It's, no, it's just I'm me. Not. Yeah. It's just Jake. Oh, just Jake. Well, that's what I meant. Someone from here. Yeah, it's one of one of us. But all right, Rog. Thanks for the question, man. Thanks, bro. Oh, no problem. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, we're gonna we're gonna do a few more. I know Shwimpy's falling asleep. It's mad late there. Apparently, Chat keeps saying he's watching Pretty Little Liars. <laughs> it's a good show though I kind of blast welcome man hello Icono Icono hey how's it going what's up dude oh, what's up dude so this is a question for Shwimpy nice oh. nice yes uh, Shwimpy uh, if the current rocket launcher tag meta keeps going and uh, KT and Leeming do not get nerfed what uh? What are your drafts gonna look like? Yeah, reveal your drafts to the world, please. Right now. Give what them was the, the question? If Once Leeming more. and Telthos don't get nerfed, what what does the current draft look like to you? Like, what, if you were to draft the most OP comp right now, what would you? Probably do? Leeming and KT. Like. <laughs> yeah, probably something like that. I don't know to be honest. Like Leeming KT and then a strong frontline. 
Probably double tank with that should work better than solo yeah. tank. Uh, then just a Rhaegar, I guess. Yeah, that's, that's the dream comp. <laughs> just the Rhaegar, man. I think so. Probably. What are the what are what are the best warriors to you right now for double warrior? ETC plus Stitches or Murden. Interesting. We don't we didn't see a lot of stitches this weekend in NA. He did get played a bit, but definitely not the way we saw him in EU. Even in EU Korea's it's crazy. Playing him a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Which is no, that'll change, don't worry. Yeah. Stitches like, is ridiculous. You look, yeah, you can't look at this weekend's drafts and be like, Stitches was barely played. Well that's because Tychus was getting played instead, you know. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean Tychus is good. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, I kind of thanks for the question, man. Thanks. Thank you. Finally got my shrimpy question. Uh, uh. I don't like questions. <laughs> Shrimpy's all stressed out. Hello. Do you, do you like answers? Hi, Zwick. Welcome. No. <laughs> Zwick, what's up, dog? He said he was ready. He said he was ready. He said hello. And then he exploded. Can't you guys hear me? Oh, yeah, on a big Hello, now. now What's up, man? All right. <laughs> sure. All right, I'm going to go a little more personal on the questions here. Uh -oh. It's a question from Artelons, K1 Pro, and Schwimpy, actually. Um, uh, are you guys making enough money to be comfortable with the esports scenes? Or uh, are you managing the fact that you need to have another uh, income to compensate for the fact that you're not making enough? Is it is it comfortable? Are you happy in that whole situation? How's it going? Uh, yeah, I'm comfortable. I think. Yeah, I'm comfortable. I think top regard. two of regions are pretty comfortable because you make a yeah. lot of money as top two. Tournaments have a lot of so, money in them. But I, think. I mean, if you look at money gets a earnings, lot lower after like third, fourth, fifth. Yeah. Here's the storms already number ten, top ten on, on esports, esports earnings, earnings out of yeah. all games. Yeah. So I thought that was, you know, that's pretty impressive. I think it is. It, I, I, I want to like. I want BlizzCon, so I'm making yeah, enough. Yeah, I'm comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just rub this in a little bit. <laughs> uh, uh, for the top teams, like top, like K1 said, maybe top two in each region, most players would be comfortable. Um, but there is an intense drop off very quickly. Yeah. To where, like most, like in North America at least, the top two, three teams, like some, the top two, team, like. In North America, one of them is even sponsored. They're not getting salaries every month, um, you know. And think, of, and they're like yeah. the best team. So, like, think if you're like a fifth, sixth place team right now, right? Probably not making very much from salary. You're not making anything from tournaments. So, yes, the top, they're they're probably comfortable overall, uh, but there's a huge, 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 huge drop off. Um, it's like maybe even just third place, to where it's a struggle for most pros. All right, then would you would you prefer if the, the company you're working for actually would give you a salary over the year uh, out of all the the incomes you would make out of all of the tournaments or are you comfortable with the, the way that they just give you like so a percentage of what you're gaining out of the tournaments or how well, does that work with the usually a lot of teams actually have salaries it varies from team to team but generally speaking a team will get a salary um not usually the, the the largest salary, but they often then get 100% of the prize pool unless the prize pool exceeds a certain number. So when you see the prize pool hit like $100,000, then the team might say, all right, we're going to take 10% and then we're going to distribute the rest of the money evenly between the five players. Sometimes the coach even gets a portion of it. I don't know if these teams can disclose their contracts. That's a little bit targeted, but I don't know what you guys can say. I mean, it's kind of like that. I think most contracts are. Yeah. Maybe in Europe coaches got paid, but I don't think any coach in NA has gotten paid. Coaches. Probably, not, probably not for heroes. Yeah. Well, and you're a manager. Coaches. You're not a coach. There's no coaches well, for NA. It used to be a coach. and Well, you know, coaches, I, usually managers don't get a percentage, but coaches do. Sometimes the managers do. Or they get something. Yeah. But if you look at like the, the Korean infrastructure, League of Legends, Dota, CSGO, generally speaking, their coaches are all part of that. And... It's it's there's a lot more money though. It's they're much much more established games. Heroes is still very young. That's very interesting. I just want to shout out to Calden Lock for saying Lee Mang last week. That made my week. <laughs> All right, Zwick. Thanks, Lee man. Lee Mang. 
He said Li Meng instead of Li Ming. Uh, um, we're gonna do one more tonight, and then we're gonna go to shout outs because Swimpy's gotta watch his show, Pretty Little Liars Marathon going on in Sweden right now. Acting rude. We're giving you a shot. I would like to know why Blizzard seems to hate Nazebo and what can be done to bring him back into the meta. He has one of the best toolkits of the game, in my opinion. There's just no love. I agree with that. I wouldn't say they hate him. They just kind of nerfed him when he didn't really need it. They do that to like a lot of heroes. Yeah. He was like situational pick, and then he just got nerfed, and now he's never picked ever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even when he was good, there was a period of time in like early alpha, not early alpha, I'd say towards like halfway through the alpha, that Nazebo was almost first pick, first ban worthy. Oh, he uh, was first pick, first ban. But um, if you were to compare that Nazebo to KT now, he did not deserve a nerf in comparison. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not even close. Like old Nazebo would fit into this meta and beat would be a prior, to, uh, you know, a, a contested pick, you know, somewhere like a Falstad. But who's your original boy, man? He's, he's not KT tier. He didn't need nurse. But like zombie. Right, I appreciate it, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, man. <coughs> that was really quick. We'll do we'll do one final one. We're gonna answer this question. Do you ask what Nazibo needed? <laughs> huh? I think uh, there was a lot of buffs. Well, obviously, obviously buffs. I mean <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you look at supports yeah. right now, right? Like every support has been buffed several times since Nazibo was like good. Like well, you, I mean, before, supports before have been nerfed. supports no, healing overall. Like, the raw healing, the he numbers of healing have gone up since then. Nazebo, like, you couldn't, like, his healers just scr struggled versus think map so. experience. You're wrong on that. Every Rhaegar healer... right now out would out-heal old Nazebo so hard. I thought Rhaegar had, like, less healing than he did. I'm talking about when he was, like, OPOP, -OP, like, back when we didn't have half the healing. The Mega yet. Ravenous changes, like, a thousand years ago. I'm just thinking I back to Brightwing, <laughs> when her phase shift, not phase shift, was it? Blink kill. Yeah. When her trait activated on blink kill. Oh, gust of healing. Yeah, gust of healing. That's what I'm thinking of when you say healing's gone down. I'm like, talking about no before the Nazebo before that, before his initial nerf. Nazebo's been nerfed like three or four times. I'm talking about oh, when Nazebo was OP, OP, OP. Healers were worse then. So I think if you put the OP, OP, I don't OP, think the OP. healing numbers were higher, though. Uther's healing was way higher. No, they were Mouse worse. Was higher. They were worse then, is what I'm saying. And they're better now. Healers have been getting consistent changes throughout the history of this Maybe game. it's before I even played, but I don't think so. It's been a while. I think overall, like, minus Brightwing, most healers have gotten... No, Uther's healing's gotten nerfed like two times. Well, he's kind got way more. Like, kind of. Like, his, his main healing is nerfed, but when he's dead, like, his healing is through the roof. True, but yeah. Uther used to be ridiculous. Malve's healing got nerfed. Brightwing's dead. No. Yeah, but when Nazebo was played, Malf wasn't picked at all. No one went like Malf, you're in Tranquility. No, Malf was the counter to Nazebo. You were Tranquility through Talk about Ravenous. original Nazebo, not like, you know, when we saw leaping spiders and shit. No, the original yeah, that's Nazebo, what I'm talking Tranquility, about. like. When Ravenous Spirit was OP? People started using Tranquility to heal through Ravenous. That was one of yeah. the counters we saw. Yeah, after they nerfed uh, specialized toxins and Ravenous. No. Yes, I, I'm, I used to be in a Zebo main. I know what I'm talking about. Like, Nazebo's numbers have been nerfed multiple times. Ravidus has had its damage reduced twice. It's had its radius reduced. It's like nerfed specialized toxins. No, they've increased its radius. Well, that they nerfed the buffs right again. They, they, they nerfed it right now, again. yes, but initially, what, when he went into the gutter, they nerfed his radius to where it was almost useless. Anyway, let's get to the last question. <laughs> All right. Um, a very frequenter in the Twitch chats, Steel Dawn. What's up, man? What's your question? Oh, is that Steel? Oh, my gosh. Shout outs to Steel Dawn 7, the legendary <laughs> hammer oh, main. But... Sorry, I had this pause the stream. Sorry about that. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, man. All right. I'm going to keep my question short. What are your thoughts on the new Nova? We talked about Nova a little bit on the show today. Right. Yeah, that's right. I don't know. Dead. This is Nova character you're talking okay. about. Is she talking about heroes? Or yeah, who is humans? Nova? Okay, my, okay a, a real question. Given the, the recent rank one matchmaking changes, what else do you think is needed in order to bring Hero League matchmaking and maybe matchmaking in general up to par with some other MOBAs in terms of quality? I think the real answer for that is you need more players. 
because with more players, the more players you have, the easier matchmaking is. But uh, I think the other answer is like Grandmaster League needs to happen. Maybe even longer queue times for people at the very top of MMR. Really, just Grandmaster League and bands? You think that's enough? That's not yeah. matchmaking, though. Grandmaster is, is like not a change. Well, if Grandmaster only plays against Grandmaster, it's it's a matchmaking change for the highest level. I don't think Grandmaster would at least say, okay, these people are at the top of MMR. That means they should be, you know, they shouldn't be facing these people and rank you know, whatever they are. It at least makes things more visible. Well, you can't even just set it to be like you only play versus other Grandmasters. Because, like, look at Hearthstone, for instance. There's, like, several thousand Legend players at a time, and sometimes still you get matched against Rank 1s, Rank 2s, True. just because there's not a big enough player base. So, like, even if they didn't put the cap at Grandmaster League at 200 players, which is what it is in StarCraft, you know, even with Hearthstone, where you have thousands of people at that rank, you know, it's still not enough players to, you know, consistently only play that rank. Um, I don't know. Like, Arthon, you know, you know like, would you just prefer longer queue times? Like, that's how it was in League. I would. Yeah. League, like, when I was ranked third in League, uh, I had, like, 30-minute queue times, and that's just how it was. You just had to wait for a good game to be made instead of being forced into something after 10 minutes. Yeah, get 15 minutes of low-quality game. Which means I get to play other games, too, which is fun. Yeah, you play other games in queue time. So yeah, you can play Blade and Soul. Um, or Hearthstone. That's how Hearthstone got popular in the first place, is because league queue times were so high that streamers would yeah. play Hearthstone. Yep. I think they need a relevant ranking system, though. Like, <laughs> rank 1 through 50. What the fuck is that? <laughs> it's like, I it's that would pointless. get more people playing the game, but that's not like a matchmaking change. I think it all goes together. Yeah. But yes, it yeah, all comes I mean, together, it gets people playing. I'd, play, I'd yeah. play the game more. I'd play Hero yeah. League more. Yeah. Like, everyone would play more. Oh, yeah. Like, people would want to watch more if ranking is actually relevant. Yeah, an in game ranking system where you can actually look at the other players too. Like, because in Hearthstone, you can't look at who's rank one legend, I don't think, right? Like, there's no leaderboard in the game. Or, like, if there's a constant leaderboard. Because, like, right now, all we get is that, like, top 200 that Blizzard releases on a website once a month, but there's, like, no way to track where you're standing in between. <laughs> you know, it's just like, yeah. let's see if I made top 50 this time. You know, even Hot Slogs is a joke. It's like, the top yeah, five players of Hot Slogs are, like, accounts that haven't even played a game in the last months. Like, So, yeah, yeah. No, no. All right, still, Don. Thanks for the question, man. You're welcome, man. Yeah. All right. Um, the final <laughs> question I'm going to do <laughs> is really targeted. Uh, it's actually a Reddit question. And I don't even know if you can do this quickly. K1, someone mm -hmm. wants to know about your sweet Falstead build. What? Falstead how, do you, build. how do you play that optimally? The, the kind of like the outplay style. Explain it. He wants you to explain it right now. Explain my Falstad build? Do it. Well, I have a different Falstad build almost every single game I play. Yeah, well, explain it. So it just depends on what you need. If you need survivability, you take E-Range. If you can safely just auto-attack freely, you take Season Marksman. Uh, you always take crit. Always. Yeah, I always take crit at 7. What about power throw? Uh, power throw, situational, I think. Sometimes I take it. I've taken it on curse on, like, stall trib comps, like split soaking, stalling trib, you can take power throw. Uh, flow rider is still good for that, too, because you could cancel every trib with flow rider if you have a good position and don't get hit. But it's basically just what you're going to be doing that game, who you're going to be attacking. If you're going to be fighting... Backline, like getting into duels with squishies, you want to get like mobility and tankiness so you win the duels. But sometimes you have like a medic healer and you're against like Zagara, Tassadar, and like slow damage comps, then you can just go all out of damage. You don't need survivability talents. 13, you do a different builds, right? Too sometimes you take the thunder strikes. Yes, sometimes I usually I like take that no, 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 I usually take the shield. That's what I meant. Sorry. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. Sorry. I meant static shield, not I usually strike. take shield. Sometimes I take giant killer, but more yeah. often the shield. And the shield's just good for dueling, like you said. Because it's just for trading efficiently. Yeah. It's like your healer has to 
heal you less pretty much so he can heal other people more every time you trade you get a 25 30% shield like Well, thank you for the insight. It is very late. Shwimpy is going to die at this rate. And thank you so much for staying awake all this time, my friend. Arthalon, why don't you start us off with the shout outs? Shout outs to everyone, all the fans. Uh, Cloud9, obviously, it's been great being on this team so far. Shout out to Town Hall for having me on. Third time? Uh, this is like my fourth or fifth, I think. I'd say fourth, yeah. Fourth? Yeah, fourth sounds about right. Always love being here. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter if you want. And that's about it. If you want. Thanks. If you want. Uh, I still have a Twitch, but I haven't, I haven't been streaming the last week because I've been sick. But we'll Step see. China I, flu. Step yeah, up. China flu. Lord Zoloff. Shout out Tempest Storm. Um, been a you know, fantastic sponsor. Uh, for the first year we are with them, we're resigning with them, which is great. Um, excited for 2016. <coughs> Check the team out this weekend in the qualifier. We're going through a lot of changes and how we do things. Um, we're completely changing how who drafts. You know who's who's leading the draft. You know we're taking practice differently to where you know uh, a lot of teams would call us the cheesy team right now. We do a lot of bizarre stuff. We're like consistently just trying to do weird things in games and uh, we're. Still too new of a roster to be like trying to do Cloud9 stuff, right? We need to first hone down our teamwork and then become weird. Um, so uh, keep an eye on, uh, hopefully, those changes that we've discussed go well for the team. Um, and um, you know, keep an eye on us you know, through the tournament. I'm really hoping we qualify this weekend. I think we will if we do, it, if we do normal stuff. If we don't do dumb stuff and just random drafts out of nowhere, we, we can qualify. Um, so big shout out to the guys working hard and, you know, Raynette, of course, um, you can catch, watch me qual casting a qualifier this weekend with Gillyweed uh, over at twitch.tv slash Gillyweed SC2. Um, and I think that's really it. Um, I just, you know, I, I'm really happy with the current state of heroes right now. Yeah. Um, I, I think the patches, the constant patches, the feedback Blizzard is giving constantly, just how they're keeping us in the loop. I mean, there's con there's a re there's two or three Reddit threads a day of like Dustin Bauer just telling truths, you know, and you know letting us know what's to be expected. So, uh, you know, I'm really just overall happy with Heroes right now. Kubi gives well shout out to Kubi for he's not here this week. He's traveling to see his girlfriend. If you missed him, and he says, shout out to Sray, but don't let him play Diablo. Damn. The call outs. <laughs> out. Just letting Kubi's voice be heard here. Schwimpy. <clears throat> Shout out to Fnatic, my team, fans, and my mom. Oh, yeah, that's it. Shout out to Schwimpy's mom. K1 Pro. Um, Shout out to Tiger JK. That's my only shout out. Damn. Why? Because he messaged me asking for a shout out. Oh, okay. He abandons his team, abandons his sponsors. <laughs> I got the team. I got it covered. Arthur, Arth yeah. All right. Got all right. All right. I see you. All right. For me, Friday, I will be casting Divergent Gaming with Dreadnought. That will be on my channel Friday night. Saturday, I don't know if I'm casting Europe or not. I haven't figured that out. But Sunday, I'll be casting the NA qualifier with Dunk Train on my channel. So casting with Dread and Dunk, it's going to be a lot of fun. I haven't cast with either of them before. Should be a fun weekend. Uh, and to my new sponsor, G2A. You can use the code SJAKE on G2A to save 3% on your pur purchase, and that supports me. Or you could use the code TEMPO or the code CLOUD9. Both work as well. Yeah, but that's not really going to support heroes, and this could help tournaments for heroes. You know, supporting me is more of a direct support for heroes. Or uh, you can use the code Tempo, or use the code Cloud Nine. All right, or, there's a bunch of codes you could use actually. There's tons of yeah. codes. But that's Jake is the code you want. Anyways, thanks for tuning in to episode 95. Thank you all so much for coming on with us tonight. Five till 100. Five till 100. 96 will be next. What are you doing no, for the 100th episode? We don't know yet, but there's actually no no show next week. Why? Because the qualifier is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We're oh. all casting. I'll do the show. Solo. 
So I don't think we actually <laughs> have a show next week. Huh. Well, we'll figure that out. Probably will May- not have a show next week unless we can. Maybe if the qualifier ends on Wednesday, we can try and squeeze in a Thursday show. We'll talk about. Yeah, that's, that's 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 a good option. That's a good option. We'll see. Well, just keep your eyes on the Town Hall Heroes Twitter next week and or our personal Twitters both work. And we'll let you guys know. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.